In this product review, I'm going to review the Atherin Genesis GP38-2s. These were released in late September 2021. There were several road names and road numbers produced. I acquired four Illinois Central Golf, two in the orange and white scheme, two in the orange and gray scheme. All four of these locomotives have Tsunami 2 sound decoders in them. The road numbers on them are 9563, 9564, 9567, and 9568. So I'll start with an unboxing of 9563. Again, the Atherin Genesis and their customary blue box with the outer cardboard sleeve. Nice representation of the locomotive on the side of the box, makes easy storage. Here we have our manual, our warranty kit. Here is the uh, parts list and some other propaganda. So Atherin has had several releases of GP38-2s in their Genesis line. Um, most recently they had a release or at least of, of locomotives that I purchased in 2017. They had Gulf Mobile in Ohio in the red and white scheme, and they also had the Illinois Central in the 1990s black or sort of Death Star scheme. And I'll show you one of those uh, GM and O locomotives here when I get a little bit further into the presentation. This locomotive is secured in the clamshell plastic coverings, some styrofoam in between the handrail stanchions, which is all, again, very customary for Atherin in their packaging. Now, ordinarily, I jump right in and take a look at the locomotive features. I'm gonna set this one off to the side. I'm gonna grab one of the orange and gray ones here, and we'll get this out of the box real quick so we can take a look at both different schemes. And for whatever reason, this orange and gray scheme was not overly liked by a lot of people who followed the Illinois Central Railroad. Um, it was not very popular. It was uh, sort of a transitional paint scheme. It was more of a simplified paint scheme. If you know anything about the Illinois Central Gulf, you know that they were notorious for not cleaning their locomotives or having their locomotives really be really grungy and gr you know grimy, dirty, um, just very unkempt looking with the white paint. So I think part of the move to the orange and gray was to provide a little bit more uh, conspicuity in terms of uh, hiding some of the dirt, but nevertheless, I like this paint scheme. I don't ever have found anything wrong with it, but I, I just know that it was not uh, warmly welcomed by people who followed Illinois Central. Here's a real good look at these locomotives. They are beautifully detailed as you'd come to expect from Atherin and their Genesis lineup. Um, I'm gonna go through some of the spotting features here in just a second. Um, but the GP38-2s, uh, the Dash 2 representation, um, was really an advancement from EMD. We know that they produced a lot of GP38s, SD40s, and they were eventually upgraded to the Dash 2 designation. EMD produced from 1972 through 1986 over 2,213 2, units. These are workhorse units. Many of them are still in operation today, even on some class one railroads. I'll, I'll show you a video here shortly of a GP38-2 that is in Canadian national colors with IC markings on it that I actually saw uh, here around my area last, last spring. The units come equipped with EMD's 645E prime mover, which is an upgrade from the 567s that we're so accustomed to on a lot of their Gen 1 diesels. The 645s produce 2,000 horsepower. These are non-turbocharged units. They are normally aspirated. The Dash 2 at the designation includes upgraded traction motor blowers, um, upgraded modular electronic cabinet, and bolted battery box doors. Some of the external spotting features 
include uh, cooling water level sight glass on the engineer side of the long hood and I'll show you that here in a second. The bolted battery box doors and two radiator fans compared to three on the GP35s. The GP38-2s were built on the same frame as the GP40s. So I'm just going to show a few of the spotting features here. So this does come equipped with EMD Spartan cab. A few, a lot of the GP9s, GP18s had the curved roof on on the on the cab. So we have sunshade window deflector or wind deflector. This one comes equipped with the Sinclair antenna on top. Sort of turn it sideways here a little bit. The speed recorder is on the left front truck. There are two exhaust stacks on top of the long hood here. Again, I'll scroll back a little bit. This is probably the most recognizable spotting feature. The two radiator fans on the, on the rear of the long hood chicken wire grill covers. Show you sort of the back part here. Sand filler hatch. Does have walk boards or footboards on the on the rear frame. MU receptacle, MU hoses. And here's what I was referring to. You can kind of barely see it, but right there on the L is the sight glass for the uh, for the water level. And just a little bit closer look here at the engineer side. Sunshade, wind deflector. I'm going to show you real quick here the close-up of the battery box. So here's a little bit more close-up view. Again, this is a bolted battery box instead of a hinge to what you would find in some of the earlier production. GP38s or any of the EMD models for that matter. So I'm going to show just a comparison here. The orange and gray unit, Illinois Central Gulf actually used a slightly darker shade of gray when they painted these and Atherin did uh, accurate, accurately uh, capture that reproduction. Uh, this one is a little bit different, the 9564 on your right. It does have a snow plow in the front as opposed to the, the footboards but we'll go through and just take a look at this one real quick as well. Again, Sinclair antenna. We have, again, two exhaust stacks. The speed recorder is on the left front truck. There you can see the two radiator uh, fans of the top of the long hood. It's got the lift rings, again, chicken wire grill. Kind of the cool thing about this locomotive, the frame and the trucks and the fuel tank are painted dark gray to match the, the paint on the long hood, whereas on the orange and white unit, they're painted black. Just a little bit of prototypical differences here. There are no footboards on the uh, rear of this locomotive, like on the 9563. You can definitely see the sight glass right there on one of the access doors. But again, overall, a little bit darker shade of orange and then of course the gray with very simple ICG markings on it. So the history of these locomotives is, is pretty, pretty cool and pretty remarkable. All of these units were purchased from the GMNO. Uh, number 746, which you see towards the front of your screen here, this was uh, Atherin Genesis GP38-2 that they produced in uh, production run at about 2017. If you go back and search my old videos, there will be a project review on, on this particular locomotive. And I've had it in multiple uh, operating sessions on my layout. But before the merger with the Illinois Central, Gulf Mobile and Ohio purchased 15 GP38-2s in 1972 as part of EMD order number 7,351. All those locomotives were numbered between 740 and 754, so 746 was in this production run. All of these locomotives were eventually transferred to the new Illinois Central Gulf as part of the merger. All 15 from that production one were repainted eventually in a variety of an Iowa, Illinois Central Gulf scheme. Some retained their GMO paint for several years after the merger. In 1974, after the merger, Illinois Central Gulf actually produced an additional 40 GP38-2s and they were numbered in the 9600 series range. 
anywhere between road numbers 9600 and 9639 and that was EMD order number 74646. Several of these locomotives were named for people involved with the Illinois Central including um, 9600 which was named for uh, Illinois Central employee Casey Jones. So I'm going to show some of the prototype photos here. ICG 9563, which is one of the orange and white schemes. This was former GMO number 743, built in April of 1972. This features early style cut levers. All in this particular locomotive was eventually repainted in the IC Black Death Star scheme in the 90s and later with Canadian National paint with IC markings. ICG 9564, this is former GMNO number 744, it's built in April 1972, it has a late style cut lever. Like the first one, this was eventually repainted in the IC Black Death Star scheme and then it later received Canadian National with IC markings. I don't have these out of the box yet, but I'll still talk about them. ICG 9567, the orange and white scheme, this is former GMNO. Number 747, built in April 1972, has an early style cut lever and was originally, it was repainted eventually in 1990s with the IC Black Death Star scheme and it also later received the Canadian National with IC markings. ICG 9568, orange and gray, was former GMNO 748. This features a late style cut lever and like the other three, eventually ended up Black Death Star, with, and then finally with Canadian National with IC markings. So I'm going to show a video here in just a second of ICG 9569, which is Canadian National paint. This was former GMNO number 749. It's out of the same order, but it's pictured in 2020, 38 years after its construction. And here's a short video I made when it was sitting out on the yard idling. Okay, real quick, so I got the rest of these out of the package and I wanted to point out a couple things. I wasn't gonna do this, but I, I thought that this was too important to overlook, just the uh, details that Atherin puts into their locomotives. So here's uh, 9564, 9568. A couple things you can see here that are different on these two locomotives. If you notice, the air horn is different on both of them. 9568 has what I believe to be a Leslie SL3, and then on the, um, 9564, it has a, a Leslie uh, L5 horn. Please don't beat me up in the comments, too bad. I am not an expert on train horns, so if you know, if I'm wrong, just comment and let me know. A couple other things that are just subtly different with these two locomotives. You can see on 9564, the road number below the cab window is white. On 9568, it is uh, the dark gray, the same color it's on the long hood. You can see that 9564 has a snowplow in the front. 9568 does not, and there's no footboards on that either. One last thing I wanted to show you. Uh, these two locomotives have different um, cut levers on it. I talked a little bit about it a few minutes ago. 9563, you can see right here, this has the early style cut levers. So it's basically a single bar, goes all the way across. There's a hoop uh, where the Conductor can or the brakeman can lift it from the from the walkway. 9564, you can see right there and right there. Those are later style cut levers, so it's more easily accessible from the locomotive steps. And I've also included 74, I'm sorry, 746, GMO 746. You can tell here this has the early style cut levers, so Again, just a few subtle differences in the details of these locomotives that Atherin produced. So I'm really excited to get these locomotives out and we're gonna run them through a couple different test operations here. We're gonna do a sound check and make sure they all work and operate. So I have 9564 on my test layout here. Full disclosure, I'm going to do the sound check with F9 activated. F9 is the half volume uh, alternate mixer half volume 
Atherin Genesis locomotives are very loud out of the package and it's too loud for the size of the room that I'm in so I'm going to do the entire sound check with F9 activated.